So, chap- paragraph 2 of 1167 also provides for the same remedy for the creditor. So, what has not been done in accordance with the tenor? I ask you to pay my house blue. But you insisted because you are a melon, you painted it red. Oh, yeah, ba, 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 ba. Oy. Oy. Or uh, I ask you, you know, to, to do a double coating in the painting of my house. You did just one. Poorly undone. So what is the remedy also of the creditor in these cases? It would be the same as when the debtor entirely did not fulfill an iota of that prestation that he must have done. Okay, so again, I repeat, the damages or what you call, I'm sorry, the expenses in asking another to, you know, rectify and to make good the fulfillment by another will now be charged against the debtor and 1170 allows additional amount for damages. Now, the issue here is, uh, is this remedies or are these remedies that are provided for by the law available in all instances when there is a breach of a debtor in regard to the obligation to do. We will find out that obviously it is not an absolute rule or it cannot be applied in all cases where there is a breach of an obligation to do. Why? Because if the obligation to do involves the personal qualification, meaning to say, it is only the debtor that you consider in fulfilling the obligation as on the basis of certain qualifications that are not present in others. So what I'm trying to point out is there is no way by which you could ask others to fulfill the obligation of the debtor. All right. Example, if I ask, or you ask me that to paint your portrait, assuming that I am a what you call now an artist who is well, who is a, a, a sought after, most sought after artist of portraits. So you contracted me and asked me to paint your portrait. I agreed. So I was supposed to start the following day, but as I went to bed that night, on the eve of when I am to start your portrait, I could not sleep thinking of the fact that I would just have to paint your ugly portrait. You regret it be horrible, terribly repugnant face. So, when I, when you follow day, when you came and asked that I start off with my duty, I simply said, says, I don't like, I cannot, I cannot simply paint your portrait. Like bridge na lang obligation in insulto ka pa. Now, this time, is there the possibility of you asking someone else to paint your portrait? Answer no, because it was because of my personal qualification, that is, my skill in pointing portraits that you were really asking for. Hence, that cannot be uh, made possible by any other painter. So what therefore would be the only solution? The only solution is to ask for damages. So this time, 
it will only be simply article 1170. Okay. Now, that would be the... Now, of course, uh, 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 when we, we consider uh, obligations, I repeat, uh, obligations to do is personal. You will have to really read the, the, the background of each and every circumstances pertaining to whether or not there could be the possibility of enforcing that obligation against the debtor or it is something that it is only he or she could fulfill and therefore no longer possible for you to, to ask others to fulfill. Secondly, it is also important whether or not, as I have said, it is something that he is only the debtor who could fulfill. Why? Because if ever, due to circumstances beyond his control, for example, he dies, that extinguishes the obligation and you cannot enforce it against his heirs or as a niece. There can be no transfer of that obligation to the heirs, unlike in an obligation to give. If your debtor owes you 500,000 pesos, but before he is able to pay off, he dies, the creditor would have still a right of action against the estate of the debtor in the possession of the heirs. So in this question, is that the same thing when it comes to obligation to do, particularly with obligation to which the debtor's personal qualification was the main consideration for the creditor to have entered into an agreement, assuming that the obligation is arising from contract. So the case of, that old case of Javier Security and Watchman versus Shellcraft Corporation, is very illustrative. Let me narrate to you the story. Uh, the vice president of Shellcraft Inc. has a good friend, Mr. Javier. Mr. Javier and this vice president became good friends because Mr. Javier has been contracted by Shellcraft as the person responsible for deploying security guards to the uh, company property premises. And this, was, this has been going on for many years. Note that the Javier Security and Watchman is not or was not incorporated into a juridical entity. It was merely, really, some kind of a form of Mr. Javier. It was operated owned solely by Mr. Javier. In the last year of the contract, of security service between Shellcraft and Javier for another year. Javier unfortunately died. Namatay si Javier. Hindi natapos yung one year period. 
So after his death, the, his good friend, the vice president, opted now to get another security agency for security personnel to be deployed. In effect, the contract was terminated before the expiration. That is when the wife and the children, the surviving heirs, came and insisted on shell craft to continue the contract of security agency on the basis of the remaining period. But Shellcraft refused. Shellcraft insisted that the only reason we continued on this agreement with Javier Security and Watchman was because of Mr. Javier's personal qualification, his proven efficiency, competence, in the last many years that he was contracted by the company was the consideration and continued to be such for the basis of the agreement. Meaning what the company was trying to say, it was because of the personal qualifications of Javier that the company entered into an agreement. Ergo, the death of Javier should likewise justify termination of the contract and relieve them from the tie, allowing to take another security agency. What did the Supreme Court say? The Supreme Court agreed with the corporation because it was proven that, number one, Javier Security and Watchman did not exist as a separate corporate entity. It was owned, operated, administered by Mr. Javier. The the name was merely to represent. It was just Javier. Two, it was likewise proven that it was because of Javier's performance in the past in fulfilling the obligation to fill in security people of which he really took care of and practiced or applied utmost diligence in the selection and supervision of the security guards. Shell Corporation was so happy and fully satisfied with their performance. Pointing out therefore that it was due to Mr. Javier's competence that was the sole reason, not the primary reason, for the continued contract they entered into. The heirs, therefore, the mother and the children, could no longer insist that even with the death of Mr. Javier, the corporation should continue and honor the remaining portion or the unexpired period of the last security agency agreement that Javier and Shellcraft still entered in. In effect, it is what we refer to as an obligation to do of Mr. Javier, of which his personal qualifications was a principal consideration and hence could not be transferred or could not be expected of any 
Ah, there. Okay. So, I think madali naman na itong personal. Let's go now to negative personal obligation. How about the negative personal not to do? Ayan na. Okay. So, uh, I have told you how to fulfill it. Edy, uh, you cannot substitute the forbearance with another. Of course, without the consent of the creditor. So, what if the debtor does what he is forbidden to do by an obligation? The remedy is what is provided for in Article 1168, which tells you, when the obligation consists in not doing, and the obligor does what has been forbidden him, it shall also be undone at his expense. So, here, instead of being done at his expense, 1168 obviously says, it be undone at his expense. The issue here is, can the creditor have, or can the creditor pursue an action to compel the debtor to undo? The answer is also no. Why? Because to compel someone to undo is to ask him to do. So, forcing him to undo is just, again, involuntary servitude, prohibited by the Constitution, or coercion, or penalized by our criminal law. So, for example, I am not supposed to paint your house red. Bawal ang red. Not with Sunday, I painted the house red. So, I have violated, I have disregarded my obligation not to do. Can you now have a cause of action to compel me to undo the red paint if I do not want to? Answer, you cannot. But what is your remedy? Ask someone else to undo the red paint. And expenses you incurred, charge against me, and an addition damages 1170. You always have to know what the basis of your cause of action is or your claim. So for the expenses, basis 1168, 1167. Additional amount for damages, 1170. That is what we mean by pointing to a cause of action, a positive law. Okay, now, the issue again here is what if what has been done can no longer be undone. Meaning there is an obligation not to, but it was done. And there is now impossibility of undoing. Now, there are uh, two instances when the undoing could not be possible anymore, both legally and what you call now uh, physically. Let's talk of physical undoing. Talagang hindi mo na pwedeng ihiwalay. For example, no smoking. Pero nigarilyo pa. Paano mo i-undo yung no smoking? Ano? Pahigupin mo, higupin, higupin, yung uso, higupin mo, ibalik mo doon sa Sige, of course that's not possible anymore. So that's physical impossibility. Now the other is legal. It would be considered as legal as when the undoing would result to the prejudice or detriment of a third party who is in good faith. What I'm trying to point out, the undoing is still physically possible, but as I stressed, 
it will damage or injure a third party who must be in good faith. In that case, it also would be a situation where the creditor could no longer ask that it be undone. So, the best example always given by textbooks would be, say, uh, there is this house that you get to rent out to this lessee, a compound. Now, uh, it has a neighbor, and there is an existing, what you call boundary a wall that is existing. That was constructed by the neighbor. Now, you saw that wall so ugly. You're like, Are, kaya lang pinagbawal ka nung may ari nung laser not to put up your own wall but you still did you put up your own wall dinikit mo pa doon sa pader na ginawa ng kapitbahay naku talaga ka naman ang tigas ng ulo mo hindi mo na sinunod yung bawal dinikit mo pa doon sa wall ng kapitbahay now could it still be undone? It may no longer be so. Although, physically, yes. But to force it, it will damage the wall of the neighbor. He will thereby be prejudiced or damage will be sustained by the neighbor who is in good faith. So, in cases when there can be no longer any undoing, what will now be the remedy of the creditor? And the only remedy damages 1170. So, this is it. Personal obligations. What I have discussed so far, so far as this first season <laughs> of my video show would be on how to fulfill the obligations pointing directly at the principal then the supplemental particularly applicable in the first two episodes real obligations then we come to the personal here in this third and this in this fourth episode, the last, the positive and negative personal obligation. After this, we go now to the second portion of the provision. Damages. 1170, which we will have to deal with in relation to 1169, 71, 72, 73, and of course, 74. So I believe that we will meet already live for the useful recitations especially the cases that you are to recite so we will do that by next week meantime for this whole week relax enjoy watch me like crazy teaching you the law on whom they trace us. Adios, then my regards to the family. I love you all. I love you.